Hey, it's Max Chroma with an all new video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys a brand new product I've released on my payhip.com slash Max Chroma website, and that is the DTF Auto Prepper Halftone Rip. Now, I've put this on sale for just $10 for now, and I'm going to show you guys in this video what you get if you purchase this Max Chroma DTF Auto Prepper. It is basically a set of action files for Adobe Photoshop, and it works in version CS6 or above. What it does is it takes any image and it'll remove part of that image so you have a transparency like it'll take the transparent background or a black or a white or another color and it'll knock it out from the image and leave half tones there so that you can print using a direct to film method or some other methods possibly it'll help with DTG printing as well but mostly this is a DTF technique where you want to print solid areas of ink even when you want to fade that image out into the background shirt color that you're going to transfer it on. So you need the inkjet printer to basically have a solid amount of transparency and you can't have like things that are fading to transparency so the halftone method actually helps to deal with that. So I'm going to show you guys what you get if you purchase this product and you download the files you're going to get a Max Chroma DTF Auto Prepper version 1.0.0 action file. You're going to get the Max Chroma Photo Tessellator patterns file. And there's this zip file that's called the LPI calculator. Inside this folder, there's a few tables that help you to determine which resolution you're working at. And if you really need to know what lines per inch, you're going to set those half tones to. But let me just go and show you opening up my version of Adobe Photoshop. This is CS6. And I'm going to show you how to install these. So we'll go to Window, Actions, and make sure we have the Actions panel open. And what we could do is we could go here and load the actions, or we could drag them right in, or even double-click them. I'll just go ahead and drag it into my copy of Photoshop CS6. And so here's the actions loaded. What I'm going to do is change this to Button Mode. And you can see these right here. Then I'm going to go and load the patterns in. So in order to do that, we're going to go to brush presets this is in version cs6 it's a little different in the modern modern version of photoshop 2023 but in here we're going to go down to preset manager right there and under the preset type we're going to go to patterns and then we're going to load the patterns in max chroma photo tessellator halftone patterns file this will let us use the custom patterns with this set of actions that does custom patterns but I basically split this up into a few sets of actions. They're really the same things. One of them does it in a full automatic mode. This one does it in a user choice mode where you can change some settings like the resolution you're using or the half tones you're using. And this custom patterns one, which will let you use any of those customized patterns that I've developed along with any pattern you can create. So let's just get right into this using some test images. And in order to show you guys how this works, I'm first just going to use like a color test file. And this would be an image that already has transparency built into it. So let's say you got some artwork and there's a transparency fading to the background and you want to print this over a shirt color. But when you're going to be doing DTF printing, you can't really get the ink to go down in all these little light areas and then get the adhesive powder to adhere to the back of it very well. You kind of need the ink colors to go down and then some of the white to be printed underneath it. Uh, that, that's how it works sometimes. Other ways you can print without the white or without some of the colors, but you really need a lot of ink to go down and you can't have it fading out. So you got to have stuff that's basically solid or just 100% knocked out with transparency. Like if you had some transparency that was just this, it would work okay. But you can't have stuff that's fading out like this. So what you do is you've already got this transparency here. You've got the image like this. I'll show you guys in some techniques how to go through this stuff and manually do it. But since you would do it the same way every time you have a uh, transparency in your image, I've created these actions and they basically automate the process. So let's just get right into it and press the DTF prep for transparency button. So this goes through and it's going to automatically upscale it to um, 600 DPI. It's going to have us pick a color just for the background shirt color. So it's, it's already finished. It's just telling me to pick a shirt color and I could really pick any of the colors I want or just maybe use gray here. We'll have it fade out to a gray. So it's finished, okay? The action happens really quickly and I'll show you guys, um, it might actually help to turn this off and show you guys, this is the file that you would save as a PNG 
or a file that has a transparent background, you wouldn't use this background when you uh, create this file, save it, and then send it over to your printing method. However, you're going to print to uh, the direct to film, but you need a file that has transparency built into it like this. And so you can see what's happened is instead of the artwork fading out, it's actually got either 100% pixels or 0%, and it's done in this halftone method. And the halftone method basically lets it show through, but it'll print down this ink, and you'll have some uh, ability to have the powder adhere to that ink below. And then it'll give the uh, simulation that it's fading out to the shirt color. Okay? But this is a really interesting technique to take transparent background artwork and make it work for DTF. Okay, let's go ahead and try that again using the same method, but we're going to do the user's choice one. So DTF prep for transparency, it's going to stop and ask me some things like what resolution do I want to run at? I'm going to keep it at 600. And then it's going to ask me, you want to keep the resolution input and output the same for the bitmap process. It's going to ask me if I want to use halftones or diffusion dither, etc. I'm going to use a halftone screen for this one. And then I can choose what LPI I want. That's like how big the dots are, the degree angle of the halftones, and also the shape of them. So I could choose here, maybe I want to do a line shape, and I want to do it like maybe just 25 frequency lines per inch, and we'll keep it at 45 degrees. Okay, and so then it's finished. I just got to pick the shirt color. I could just hit OK and show you. So it's done it on a black shirt color. You can see now that it's applied these line halftones to basically knock out the artwork and fade it into the background shirt color, whatever shirt I'm going to put it on. And so this is one technique. Using the user choice mode, you can pick whatever halftone pattern you want there. Okay, let's close that and start again. This time we're going to do the custom patterns. So DTF prep for transparency, it's if you've already got a transparent background, or if you take an image in and you create your own transparent background. So we're going to do DTF prep for transparency with the custom patterns. So this one's very similar to the user choice mode, except when it goes through, I can pick the resolution. And then I can pick a pattern that I want from the custom pattern files that we loaded now. And so I've got this cool triangle pattern one. When using this one, you kind of want to keep the percentage of the scale low. So I'm going to go with like maybe 7%. Hit OK. And I'll let it be 45 degree angle. That's fine. And we'll just pick like, uh, maybe we'll do a white shirt color here. So you can see there's the artwork fading out to a white shirt color with the triangle halftone pattern being used instead of the transparency. This is a pretty cool effect to get your artwork to fade out to the shirt color. And you can print it with a DTF printer like this. Okay, so let's close that one, start over again. And this time we're going to go through the next button, which is the DTF prep for black shirts. So let's pull open a file that actually has a black background in it. And I'll show you guys essentially how this whole thing works. Let me pull up one maybe like this right here. Or I don't know, I want to find a different one. Um, actually, I'm going to open up this artwork that has some transparency in it. And I'm going to put black behind it. So let's say instead of having an artwork transparency already there, Let's say we had something with it was flattened already to black. OK, so we just got artwork, but it's got all this black here. And we want to print it out on a shirt, but we don't want to print all this black ink. We well, don't really need to print any of the black ink. You can have the black shirt color produce all of that shading. So using this technique, I'm going to do DTF prep for black shirt. This is the automated one, so it uses a 70 LPI dot. It does it at 600 DPI, and there you go. It's all finished. It has taken the artwork and faded it out to a black shirt color. If you turn off this shirt color, you can see there's no black in this design at all. So you'll save on black ink when you're printing it this way. And you'll basically be able to uh, not have it feel as stiff or feel as much ink all over the shirt because you don't have any black ink printing. It's all just these half tones printing with the glue under when you put the powder and glue on it, and then it'll get it to adhere to the shirt. And so this is a pretty fun technique to use here. And again, I can change that shirt color, but if I was removing the black from everything, I wouldn't want to go on a light shirt color. I wouldn't want to stay on like a darker shirt color. Okay, but then you could take this art, put it on a lot of different shirts. 
So let's close that and you can see through the user choice one, I could do the same thing and be able to pick the settings, but I'm just gonna skip ahead and we'll keep going through on some more of the actions, how they work. So let's open up another test file. This time, I guess I'll just do it with a white background. Maybe I'll use the same image because I don't think I have a lot of others in here with white backgrounds. Yeah. Let's just bring this one in. Okay. And let's say it was just flattened. Uh, the other thing that I didn't show in the video, you really want to be aware of the image size you're working on. So you got to be at the print size and in inches here. The resolution doesn't matter as much because it's going to upscale it at a certain point, but you might want to stick to like a 300 DPI original image and there's the size of it. So let's say I got a white background, but if I'm going to print it on a white shirt and I'm using the DTF method, I don't want to put a ton of white ink down. It, I only want to use that white maybe for underneath the colors when it automatically does it, or I just, you know, I don't need to use any white ink by itself. So let's do the DTF prep for white shirts. This essentially does similar to the process with the black, but instead of uh, getting rid of all that black ink, it just eliminates the white ink. And so there we go. I can now change this shirt color and show you that there is no white being used in the design anywhere, right? Let me turn this off and show you. So it's basically knocked out all the white. It's just using the dots of the colors, how they fade with black. And the white is creating all of the other tinting and toning of these colors. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and close that one. And then the last thing I'm going to show you, which is really the best part of this action set, you can also do two different modes of custom colors and removing those colors from the background. So let me find one that works with this. Let's say you had a gray background. Okay. And let's say that this was, uh, or maybe I'll just put in a kind of a color. Let's just flatten that. So there's a couple different ways to work with this. Let's say you've got some artwork that's flattened and it's got a color in the background everywhere. And you're like, man, I don't want to print all of this stuff. I need to knock it out to transparency. So let's try a DTF prep for custom shirt one. This one's going to use a color range method. So I will have to pick the color I want. So it brings up color range. I'm going to select this. And then in this, in this window, you can see just how much you're, you're extracting from that. So if I want to like only pull out the background stuff mostly, I could do that. Or if I want to really get in there and try to get most of that transparency stuff out of there, I could try this. So let's just hit OK like that. And it's also going to stop and let me make one more adjustment um, to that. So or that's only in the user choice one where we can adjust it again. But uh, let's, let's pick when it brings up this shirt color to pick the shirt color, let's pick from what I already did with that foreground color. So hit OK. Now you can see there's the artwork fading out to that shirt color using the half tones. And what it's done is uh, you know, there's still some of that shirt color in there. It's going to still use some of it. I didn't remove it completely there, but you're going to basically be able to fade out this artwork without having all of that other shirt color in there. And it does it automatically for you. You don't get, need to know like all these tricks and things in order to get into there. It's really hard to do with some of this stuff. So let's just close that. And we'll go into the next version, the DTF prep for custom shirt two. This one uses a different method than the color range. So let's click on the color we want to remove, hit OK. And here it's going to give me a chance to sort of look at it first. So I can see how much color I'm pulling out. If I go this way, I'm going to remove too much of the design, right? And if I only move the middle part, it might like not really keep the, uh, the design saturated. So what I want to do is usually start from this end and bring it in further so I see everything getting brighter. Okay, and just move this stuff up like that. So let's move this end a bit. I want to keep the black in here but I just want that green to be the part that fades out. I can't go too far this way or I'll cut it out completely. Let's kind of do it like this. Hit OK. And it goes through and does that similar thing where it chops that color out from the artwork. And uh, this one basically got a little bit more of the color removed than the, uh, the custom color range one, but you see it's kind of cut into the black a little bit too much. So I might want to be careful when I'm doing that you know, the dark shirt color will fill that in a bit, but uh, you got to be careful with that. So let me just close it and we'll try that one more time. This time we'll adjust the levels before we let it finish. So let's click on that shirt color. 
and then we're going to go in here and pull that up. So let's let's zoom in a bit and see that we're actually making that stuff black. You know, we're filling that in. No more shirt color in those areas. And then hit OK. There we go. It didn't knock out as much of the green from those black areas. So that one's pretty cool. That, that lets you pick a custom color and remove it from the artwork. And then you can use that same color for your shirt. So, you know, let me show you with just another test file of that. And here's one of the things you can do. I programmed it a specific way. If you already have transparency built into the image, you're going to want the transparency to fade out to the shirt color, but you can also pick a custom color. So let's say I do DTF prep for custom shirt one. It's going to go through. It's going to keep that transparency intact, but I'm going to be able to pick a color. Let's say I want the reds. You know, or I'm going to use maybe the uh, reds like this. I want most of the reds to be removed from this design. I'm going to print it on a red shirt, but I want this transparency to still be fading out too. So let's just hit OK. And it's going to go through and make sure it removes both of those. And you can see now the red is mostly removed here, right? Before I set this shirt color, this is all knocked out, but I'm going to change the shirt color to red, OK? And there you go. So now it's on a red shirt and I don't need to print the red ink because all this stuff is going to print and then blend out with these half tones into the red shirt color. So I'm going to finish the video here because that's basically everything for this DTF Auto Prepper action set for now. I'll go and show you guys some more examples. Maybe we'll do one more just for some fun. I think I've got uh, some stuff here that works pretty good for it. It's really all about you know how the artwork has stuff around it. So sometimes there's images, and this one I'm going to rasterize because it's a vector image. So you, you kind of, could kind of just delete that background. But let's say you didn't have a vector image to work with. Let's say you just had this flattened artwork like so. You want to get rid of all that stuff. Now there are ways to you know go in with the eraser tool and just start erasing stuff. You know maybe you want it to fade out like that. This is one technique you could do. You just go in and erase that like so. Okay, as long as it's all mostly erased everywhere around the edges. Now this way I could go and do the DTF prep for transparency. That would work now. But let's say I didn't have all that stuff. I'm going to revert this. So let's say it wasn't, uh, we'll just undo it. So some other ways to do this is like the magic wand tool. You can go in and try to select all that stuff. But to get it to fade out, it's just easier to use the custom color. So I'm going to do DTF prep for custom shirt one. It's going to have me select that color. And then we'll make sure we pick sampled colors and then we can select it. And then you can see right here how I can adjust this to like go into more of the design or maybe less of the design and just knock out that area in the in the fading background. So I hit OK, go like this. And then once it's done, I could set it to that shirt color. And there you go. So now this design is going to print like this. See all the half tones? Let me let me put a different shirt color in. Set it to something extreme like, like magenta so you can see this. OK, so there it is. The dots are fading out to that magenta shirt color. And if I put it on the yellow shirt color that it was, I'm going to get that to show through all the areas of the art that it should be yellow. But I can print less ink and have this go on the shirt and maybe not feel as stiff. So this is some fun stuff. I had a lot of people asking me about if I could do some things to help out with the DTF process. And so this is the Max Chroma DTF Auto Prepper Halftone Rip. Again, that's uh, originally $20, but I got it on sale for just $10 right now. And you'll get this set of actions. You'll get the pattern files that come with the other product, the Max Chroma um, Pattern Pack 1. And then you can go ahead and just start running through images, removing the backgrounds that you want to remove. And then you would basically save these files as a PNG file. You would go ahead and save it as a PNG file um, and then open it up in your RIP program that you use to print to the actual DTF films. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll show you guys how to use this stuff some more in some future videos.